Men, and this is messages for all the divorced men. I need you to listen to me. And the reason why it's for divorced men is because we don't do our due diligence. Most women, they really, when they get divorced, they really do their due diligence. Most of us just fall by the wayside. There's a reason why they tell you to keep your divorce decree forever, right? So let's go into the story. So my buddy, his father recently passed away. And while he was in hospice or while he was transitioning, his, his father gave him power of attorney. He was like, hey, son, you can just handle everything and handle my affairs. And he was a veteran as well. So the father was went to the bank and he realized his father, he had all the accounts, account numbers and access and stuff like that. His father gave it to him. And the life insurance policy, his father had a lot of life insurance policies, you know, with work and things of that nature. So long story short, um, his father, you know, had a bank accounts that had a pretty substantial amount of money in it. So he went to go to the funeral home. The funeral home said, well, he paid for a plot and everything. We have that and everything, but we need his, his wife's signature for her to sign off this. And he was like, what do you mean? He said, they have a two plot. So we need to, you know, her signature. He was like, my father has been divorced for over 30 years. And I don't really talk to my mother. We don't have a very good relationship. He said, well, we need, in order for us to do this, we need her signature. All right. So he calls his mother. That triggered her, his mother to start scheming. So then her mother, then his mother went to the bank where he, she knew, she knew where my buddy's father was. He was a very methodical man and wiped out all the accounts that he had, wiped them out, took all the money out, all of it. Right. Then went and said, well, let me look at the house that he lived in. It was paid for and was like, well, I want to sell it. He put it on the deed. Most of us, of us men that we call providers and everything else, when we do get married, we want to make sure that the wife has access to it because we don't really think that this is going to end. We think, well, it's going to end with me in the ground. So let me make sure you put, you know, on everything. But when you get a divorce, you forget that you got to go back to around and circle back at all those other places and get it taken care of and get it removed. So his mother wiped out all of the accounts, all the accounts. And thank God that, you know, VA pays for pretty much some things and whatever. And he had some money saved up to bury his father the right way. But all the life insurance policy he had a couple of life insurance policies for him, the kids and everything. Cause he wanted to make sure his kids were taken care of in his death. She was like, mm -mm, I'm taking that. And I got to say this, this made me look at my stuff and I'm going to put me per make it personal. I realized that my ex-wife was on a lot of stuff. I did not even know none of the stuff that I put her on. I forgot. You have to go to Social Security Administration and you have to let them know that you're divorced. I didn't know I was supposed to do. I thought it just happened. I, you know, just it happened circumstance. I didn't even know. I just thought, oh, you once I get a divorce, it goes in some system and everybody gets it. No, it doesn't. You have to let the state you 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 um, you uh, were married in know that you are divorced. Sometimes some they have it and some they don't. I had to call uh, my 401k. She wiped out his entire 401k. She did this in a matter of weeks, right? And he couldn't, because he had a power of attorney, they gave him some information, but he never took his wife off of anything, his ex-wife off of anything. She wiped him clean, wiped him clean, right? And now the, the, the son is trying to fight this. You imagine you have to fight your mother for stuff that is, that's not right. And even the lawyer said, unfortunately, yeah, he got a divorce decree, but because of certain laws or whatever, I don't understand too much. She, you, you, you may with the government, you may end up saying, Hey, you know, she doesn't deserve this money. She gets survivor benefits and you know, you may can fight that, but the rest, the life insurance policy and everything else, you may can't do anything about it. You can try. You know, and with the, the, the house, because she was on the deed and the house is paid for, it's technically her house. He has to fight his own mother for that. 
So men, what I'm saying, when you get a divorce decree, just don't let it sit somewhere. Hey, do your due diligence and go to these different places and, and get these things done. I didn't, like I said, with me, I didn't know I had to check some stuff and I'm like, holy crap, I didn't know I was supposed to do this. And I'm taking off to get these things done because I don't want my, my son to have that level of hindrance. You have to understand something. You don't know people. Right. And it's not saying that your your ex-wife or, or your whatever will do anything. I'm not saying that, but you don't know what level someone will be in when they see a certain substantial amount of money. And your kids have to get these things done for you for you in your timely demise and when you're transitioning. So make it a little bit more smoother for them. And a lot, like I said, men, we do this. I'm a victim of this. I thought the same thing. And this even happened to my sister, you know, my actual sister, you know, where you have to get these things done. And it's such a headache for our kids to get these things done. And we think that these things happen automatically. Even at my job, I didn't know. I was like, oh, wait a minute. I thought I did this. And they said, no, you didn't. I said, like, well, I thought that if I called the person and sent them an email, we think things are simple and it's not. So do your due diligence, even if some of you are getting prepared to get remarried to someone. You may want to get remarried. It may, something may happen to you. You are hindering them from doing what they need to do for you in your, in your transition. You know, whether you get another wife, whether you get, you know, whatever you decide to do, but you're hindering them from doing that. And you're giving a lot of power back to your past and you shouldn't do that. So I'm asking a lot of men, right? Because we do this. Cause I talked to my buddy, he said he didn't even think about it. And he looked at some accounts and he realized his ex-wife is off there. And he's been divorced for over 10 years from her. And he was like, oh, man, I didn't know what I put on there. A lot of us do things and we forget. All right. So I want you to take this information and, and do something with it and do your due diligence and make sure that you, you know, cross your T's and dot your I's because you, you, you know, you don't want this to happen to you. All right. You don't want this to happen to you. And like I said, even me, I had to look and I'm like, oh, I, when I was shocked when I seen this, I was like, oh, man, it's like 10, 15 different things that my ex-wife is still on that I never thought about, you know. And yes, it, it's illegal. Yes, it is. But look, man, you a person, you don't they don't care. You know, people are, are cross that bridge when they come to it, you know, type of thing, you know. So please, man. Do your due diligence. Go out there. Get their stuff done. And, and trust me. Trust me when I tell you. You will probably be surprised. All right? You'll be surprised at how much stuff you forgot. And I know, like like I said, I know, I know, I know. A lot of times it's a headache and we don't think that it's worth it. Trust me. My buddy's going through it. He's going through it. All the things that his father prepared for is gone. And his mother is remarried to another man. So you have to understand that money is going to another man and not you. And that generational wealth that you wanted to keep for your children as you go and transition is going to another family. If you want to look at it that way, right? Whatever way you need to look at it to motivate you to get up and go get this stuff done, please check this stuff out. Even me, I got to take off and get some stuff done. Take care. A word they say is enough for the wise. The men, you've heard it all. This is coming from somebody that has experienced it. And we don't have to all experience something before we learn. And I want to read some comments from that I saw under the post. There is one that I particularly want to bring so that you guys can talk about it here. Like share your thoughts on what you think. Let me just go ahead and read the comment for you guys. This comment is coming from a woman. She wrote, stay single nowadays. Women don't, women don't give up your freedom and independence to anyone. Build your own wealth. Pour your love and talent into yourself. Stop talking to these men. Stop listening to them. This man really believes in what he is saying. He believes he's right. Stop dealing with these people who will marry you. F over you and leave you penniless for another male. Just stop dealing with them. Entertain them out there somewhere and leave them out there somewhere. Oh my God. And this woman looking at her picture, she looks to be a mature woman. 
she sounds very bitter if i do say so myself because i don't know why people will listen to somebody talk and speak from experience and and they, they feel as if the person is attacking them like wow this is coming from a, a mature woman that's meant to be advising younger women no this is this is a no-no for me but can you imagine what she's writing don't give up your freedom and i don't understand people saying oh as a woman you are giving up your freedom freedom and independence to get married like i for the life of me i will never understand that is marriage supposed to be okay here is the thing there are women that view marriage and marriage is favoring the men meanwhile some men on the other hand are viewing the marriage as oh it's only the women that is favoring i don't even understand but the, at the end of the day marry who likes you go where you are respected and favored or you are respected and loved marry the person you know that wants forever not just somebody that wants a wedding don't just marry a girl because oh she looks fine you can you know she she looks good enough to be a wife <laughs> your name is sorry you imagine marrying a woman like this just imagine how the household will be now nah. but let me read some some response that people give us some persons reply them let me just read it for you guys i'm happy that this response is also coming from a woman this person that re- responded to her this advice is from the pits of hell and you probably believe that you are so on point. Exactly. Anytime we step outside of God's will for our lives, this is what happens. Wait on God as it as he relates to lifetime partners. The problem is we don't want to wait and most women marry a man because of the ability to take care of them. Exactly. This woman, God bless her. She went on to say, God honors marriages. God honors marriage. The problem is we 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 don't, and our, and we motivate and always, and our our motives are not always right. Okay, let me read that again. God honors marriage. The problem is we we don't, and our motives are not always right. Exactly, exactly. God bless you. Oh, let me read the next one. This is also another response to that woman. Someone is bitter. It will be okay. I promise. <laughs> oh my, but but truly, her her comments is so bitter like there's so much bitterness behind the words somebody has not responded you still gonna want some sex from a guy abu <laughs> oh my god like some some people truly need to heal this person the woman is actually the comment sounds like she has, she has been scorned by a man and you know she's not regarding all men as scum but the fact that you met a wrong person does not necessarily mean that everybody's like that you guys get we don't even know how to vent people we let into our lives. Even in normal relation, friendship, we need to vet the people who are letting into our lives. So for the fact that you've been scorned by friends, does that mean you will not want to be friends with anybody? Is that the way you're not believing your life? We, nobody is meant to be an island. We are not wired that way. We are wired to want companionship, whether in friendship or in, you know, in marriage, in relationship. We can't do life all by ourselves. It will never go well. Seriously, no matter how you think you can stay all by yourself it doesn't end well for anybody that wants to be on an island this i want to also read this comment for you guys so this person said blaming women for what men do is wild many broke men aren't better and there's no god's plan which one there's no god's plan ah otherwise there wouldn't be wars where innocent people die or let me guess they couldn't wait to religion makes us forget that good and bad is all part of life and for the most part humans are selfish which is why even jesus said it was better to be single before you before you argue google it up because many christians do not even know this you really think god is interested in who you live with <laughs> do you know what i found so funny people that are not christians using bible to argue <laughs> so what do you think what do you know about the preceding statement before jesus made that statement people will just take one part of bible and be running with it I don't even want to argue with this person. What do you know about Christian? What do you know about what Jesus has instructed us to do? But the thing is that whether we like it or not, we as humans, we have our free will. We have the free will to either do good or do bad. So that's the choice that God has given us. You can decide to be a good person. You can decide to be a bad person. And that choice will never be taken away from you. So it is what you do with that choice that matters. Do you th- and I mean, I, I, I love to go i try as much as i can to do life by the golden rule do unto what others what you want them to do to you if you want to treat others bad it's a choice and I, you know i know we are humans we, we 
won't always get it right but at least try your best to do right by him by somebody don't just marry somebody because oh the person has money and when that money runs out you know your true colors will not come out also i've also seen poor men that are so good and humble and loyal when they're poor but the very minute they start any money oh you will not you will not even want to know the like you will not like the that true nature which is why i don't always you know i don't always buy into when i see a poor man being humble i want to see who you what you are when you have money that's your true your true human being money truly brings out the true you that's my belief if you are able to be humble while you have money you still be humble while you are poor but some persons when they are poor they are humble when they start getting money oh my god they become an animal but let me know your thoughts in the comment section as regards what that man said don't forget to like and subscribe Take care of yourselves, guys. And please, for the life of me, vent who you are, you allowing into your life.